Hello everyone. Welcome to Gardening with Brother Nature. I'm here at the Evergreen Brickwork site. Today we're going to talk about bio-intensive potato planting or layered gardening. So what the whole concept behind that is that if you have you have your garden boxes, like you see you have right there, nice garden boxes, most people, will, will, what they'll do is they'll just plant everything that grows on top of it and, and don't worry about the bottom, but worry about the bottom. So what you, what you can do is potatoes in there. So what you're going to do is dig your holes, have holes dug here. Your holes go down nine inches, all right? So dig down nine inches, then go across your next hole, go about six or seven inches. And then once you dug all your holes, you're gonna take some compost or your fertilizer, and you're gonna add it into the hole before you put the potato in. The good thing about this one is that when you're doing your potatoes, you don't have to cut them up in little chunks and let them sit. All you have to do is take the whole potato like this, the potato, make sure all the eyes are facing up, okay? So facing up, not facing down. So the whole potato goes in, all the eyes, see all the eyes on here, like the roots growing out of there. So what I'll do is I'll take this potato, come to one of the holes, and I'll just drop it in. Then I come over here, I'll take my little small trowel, and I'll bury it, bury it. I'll go across and do that for all the potatoes, for all the holes inside there. What you're going to do next is once you have all the potatoes inside there, then water, give it a really good watering, and then I plant corn on top. So I'll do a whole three sisters on top like corn, beans, and squash. So what you're going to do is utilize the whole area inside there. You have to use the whole area instead of just letting the bottom just sit for nothing inside there, right? So once you're doing that, then you come over to your next ones and start doing your next ones. Maybe you want to put sweet potatoes inside those ones, okay? Maybe you want to do more potatoes. And this one over here from last year, you'll see down here, I forgot to take some of the potatoes out. So that's what growing potatoes again, which is fine because who doesn't love potatoes, right? So we're going to move on, walk around a little garden to show you what we've done so far. If you look down here, this is all the corn. It's all white corn. White corn, you can see the three the clay pot irrigation inside there as well. Alright. Then we'll walk over here. What we have over here, if you guys can see over here, some trellises with some beans, some bean trellises. So the garden, the garden is starting to pop. Everything's a little bit a little bit late this year, but that's, that's fine considering the year that we're in, what we've been up to. But everything is working its way. I mean, who doesn't love the garden, right? <laughs> and you know Brother Nature loves the garden. So also inside my garden, so we started planting. So let's look through one of the trellises. So over here on this trellis, that big trellis right there, we have different kind of squashes growing on the bottom of there. There's a Tatsumi squash, a Desi squash, and a Seneca squash. So hopefully I can get them to work the magic up that way. And then over here, behind me here, you see the those right there? Those are going to be for pole beans. So pole beans are going to grow all inside there. We're going to have more corn planting inside here as well. So I'm going to take you through the process of everything I do here at Brother Nature's Garden, that evergreen brick works, and how much fun we have. But you can't can't forget not to have you must have your 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 flowers as well as you can see here lots of interesting stuff growing inside this garden and that it being first nations month or indigenous month here in canada the month of june we should always talk about native species plants and native species food or native food um, that are better for your gardens are better for the climate um, Any native species plants are actually drought tolerant. They know how to survive our winters and are better for your for your soil as well deep rooting system like your native trees you can have your pawpaw trees of uh, those native plum trees uh, native persimmon trees maybe you're going for for flowers like echinacea or maybe the black raspberry great things to have to have in your garden and is a great food source um, last week we talked about the turtle we saw a turtle so this week i've seen no wildlife oh no i saw a zebra uh zebra swallowtail yellow and black one it's a part of the pawpaw trees because there's a few pawpaw trees on site and i'm happy about that um, but one thing about the turtle within 
Anishinaabe culture, the turtle is very significant because we are on Turtle Island. That's why the turtle is important within native cultures. We, we realize we're on Turtle Island. We see the turtle, we have turtle clans within our, within our nations. So the turtle is very, 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 very important to us. All right, my friends. So what I need to do now is continuing my garden. I have some more potatoes that I put aside there, some more corn on top, on top of there. So I can show you next week or the next video what it looks like after the fact. All right, this is Brother Nature saying, be nature, get out there and garden, garden at least one thing, and enjoy the day. Bye for now.